Today's passage comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Nehemiah 3, 1 to 5. Let's read in one voice together. This is the word of God. Eliashib, the high priest, and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of the Hundred, which they dedicated, and as far as the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built the adjoining section, and Zakur, son of Imri, built next to him. The fish gate was rebuilt by the sons of Hassanel. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts and bars in place. Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakaz, repaired the next section. Next to him, Meshalam, son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezebel, made repairs. And next to him, Zadok, son of Bana, also made repairs. Last verse, the next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we uh, share on how we can continue to rebuild our community, uh, please speak to our hearts and help us uh, to take part, to take action uh, in faith, knowing that you are with us. So please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we have been going through the book of Nehemiah to see how the Israelites rebuilt the Jerusalem wall to protect the city. And we are trying to see what we can do to help rebuild our Arden Youth Group and make it a place where students really want to come and grow together in faith. We see that Eliashib, the high priest, started the building with the, his fellow priests. These were leaders setting the example and helping to build it first. We need student leaders who are willing to set the example and start building with me and the teachers. When the others see the student leaders build, the other students will start to help build as well. So student leadership is very important. As we continue the story, one by one, uh, family after family began to rebuild the walls. The word rebuild was used 35 times in this chapter. This word means to make something strong. And we are in a sense rebuilding our youth group to make it strong. We already have a youth group. Why we we're rebuilding is to make it strong. We're trying to be personally stronger in faith. And in order for us to grow stronger, we need each other to help build together. We cannot do it on our own. Among the builders uh, were the people from the city of Tekoa. Everyone say Tekoa. Let's read uh, verse 5 together. One, two, three. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. They repaired that section, but the nobles, uh, the leaders of Tekoa, would not put um, their shoulders. They were, not, they were unwilling to work. The people were very willing to build, but these leaders thought they were perhaps too important. They're too cool to join in the hard work. There might be some of us who think, right, you don't need me to build the art and youth. I'm too cool to help build. And you might think that you are too cool, but you are the one who actually suffers when you don't join with everyone else. The example I thought about was group projects at school. Uh, if you have, for example, groups of four, there's always one or two people who don't do anything. Who knows what I'm talking about? I know what I'm talking about because I was sometimes one of the one or two, and sometimes the two that actually did the work. They're either too cool, they don't care, they'll rather do other things, and often they get the same letter grade as even the leader of the group who did 90% of the work. You might think, why work hard when you can just get the grade? But is the group project all about the grade? The grade is something that helps motivate the students, but the point of the group project 
is to learn together about the subject. It's about teamwork. It's about helping each other. It's about brainstorming. It's about making something wonderful together. I believe that we are starting to build something wonderful here at Arden. We already have quite a few students who are always there. They always participate and they're always willing to help rebuild. And those students are helping to rebuild just by being there. We have parents and adults who are praying for us every day. Trust me, because every morning prayer, I go every morning at 6 a.m. And one of the prayer requests that we always lead uh, the people to pray about is for our EM, our English ministry, and for our kids, our students, just like you guys. Every morning, at least, you have 20, 30, even 50 people praying for you every day. Right? We're helping to build this together. If you think it's not worth it to help build, you are the one who actually suffers. Right? Part of growing in faith is meeting together. It's helping to build together. It's having Bible study. It's coming out to Sunday worship. It's praying for each other. It's coming to events. It's encouraging others to join. It's being part of worship team. Just being on the side and not helping to build is not beneficial to you. I know some of you are scared, perhaps, of opening up and being vulnerable in a community. I know it's not easy. I've been there too, where it's not easy to, you know, open, open up to a certain group of people. But if we live in fear of building, we never experience growth as a Christian. You'll be like 20 years old and say, I don't know Jesus. I don't know if I'm saved. And you will likely leave the church because although you've been a part of the church, you never were really opening your heart to it and helping to build. You're like that student who maybe got the A, right? But never knew the material. I think of Korean students in Korea, how they learn English. They might know the vocab, they know more words than us. They might get good grades, they might go to prestigious universities. But when you talk to them in English, they're scared. They don't know how to really speak because they're afraid of messing up, right? The ones who are really good at English are the ones who aren't afraid of messing up. They're not afraid. They might not get the best grades, but they are able to learn from their mistakes, learn from others, help others, and they are the ones who really grow, and they are the ones who really enjoy speaking the language. If we are afraid of people, community, and therefore unwilling to build together, you might think you're more comfortable now, but you will end up with nothing. Right? So I want to encourage you guys. After we see countless families build their different sections, you'll see family after family if you look at chapter 3. We see in verse 27 that the men of Tekoa repaired another section. you got to understand, rebuilding these walls, it was super hard work. They didn't have technology like we have. They didn't have those machines. They didn't have, you know, go to Home Depot, hey, can I get this, 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 that. No, they had to do it all themselves. They didn't have the expertise. They couldn't look online and say, well, how do you make this, how do you do that? They don't have a YouTube video. Yet, despite the hard work, they wanted to rebuild another section. They're the only people who you see that built another section. What does that show? If they didn't see the importance of building the wall, if they didn't enjoy building the wall, if they didn't like working together, they would have never helped to build another section. They would have said, I did my part, y'all do yours, let's enjoy this. But for them, 
to strap on and go again and say, you know what, I'm going to build another one. It shows just how much they cared about the community, how important it was for them. They didn't care that the leaders of Tekoa, remember the nobles, they didn't care that they're not willing to help build because they're too cool or important. Likewise, as we build our art and youth group, don't always wait for the leaders and for me. Be proactive. Think outside the box. I remember when I was student council president at my seminary, my Bible school, to become a pastor, if you guys don't know what seminary is. And I had 11 other members in my, um, in my student council. Some were treasurers, activity leaders, some coordinated chapel, some were media team. And there were so many times where I didn't even ask them to help me with something. And they made something for people. They made something look very pretty. They decorated, right? If you ask them, can you help prepare, you know, a snack table? Then all you have to do is put snacks and, and make a way for the money and all that, right? But they designed it so that people would look at it and say, wow, that's pretty. That's nice. They want to buy stuff. They want to support Stuff like that, right? And you guys don't understand how touched I was that they would go out of their way to help build our community, to serve one another in love, to make our university a better place, a more enjoyable place, a more family atmosphere. Right? They thought out of the box, and you don't know how great a building that is. So I want to encourage you guys, don't wait until someone says, come on, I need your help. Come on, we need this, we need that. What can you do? As you think outside the box, as you pray, as you ask God for help, what can you do to help our community? Through our story today, we see that it's impossible to rebuild on our own, to build anything on our own. There are mentions of at least 50 other people and families just in this chapter. Nehemiah had no chance to build this wall alone. Brothers and sisters, it's going to be amazing if we build this community together. Because we believe that God is with us. God will help us. And that if we help build, we will grow in faith. We will enjoy building. We will help others grow in faith. Think about that group project. What's that group project for? What's this building for? It's to grow together. It's to strengthen one another in faith. If you're in the back, you might get a letter grade and say, oh yeah, I'm a part of Arden and, and you know, we're growing and stuff like that. But are you growing personally? Right? That's the key. Don't just think about that letter grade. Oh, it's an A. If you don't know anything, if you're not growing, if you're not experiencing God in a deeper way, what is that grade? It means nothing. So brothers and sisters, don't be afraid. Don't think you're too cool. Let's give it a try. Let's build this community together. And it starts with just coming out. Just be participating, thinking outside the box, using the gifts that God has given you, encouraging others. It starts in little things like that. And I guarantee you, you're going to see some amazing things as we build together. So let's do it. Let's rebuild together. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today as we continue in the book of Nehemiah to see how we can rebuild our art and youth. We pray that you will continue to speak to our hearts and help us as we learn today to work together, Father, to uh, not think, Lord, uh, we're too cool or um, to think, Lord God, it's not, we don't, uh, you don't need me, right? Um, that we, we don't need to think that we're afraid or of community and of people, that if we give it a try, if we take that step of faith, if we believe you are with us, and we help to build something, it's going to be great. 
We're going to grow in faith. We're going to help others grow in faith. And this is going to be an amazing experience. So help us, God. It's not easy, but it's certainly worth it. So help us to work together with leaders, to work together as we pray. And we know amazing things are going to happen. So please be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.